Hello and welcome to True Crime Diary, in which we look back through the annals of true crime to discuss events that took place on this week in history. I'm your host, Mike Decano, and with me as always are my friends, Jed Lester. Hello. And Rue Turner. Hello. We want your reviews. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please leave a review and preferably five stars. And if not, you can always email your review to us at stuff at truecrimediary.co.uk or through our Facebook page or Instagram account. And links to all of those are available on our website, www.truecrimediary.co.uk. And in appreciation of every five-star review, we'll give you a shout-out in a future episode. So the date we're looking at this week is the 25th of February. And on this date in 1879, Charles Peace was hanged in Leeds, England. The notorious burglar and murderer had been hunted nationwide and evaded capture by skilled manipulation of his features to obscure his identity, giving rise to his reputation as the killer with the Indian rubber face. Oh. Well, that was his kind of nickname, was it? Yeah, yeah, at the time. Are we talking master of disguise or he had a rubber face? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, basically he had a rubber face. So he did... Oh. <laughs> yeah, he did use, um, like, uh, makeup and stuff. He used a walnut juice to colour his skin. Walnut juice? Oh, right, okay. Walnut nice. juice. If there is yeah. such a thing. Is there such a thing as <laughs> walnut juice? You squeeze hard enough. That's how it's been described. Walnut it? oil, probably. All that, well, he just rubbed walnuts on his face, as far as I know. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, sorry, I, 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 give us a minute. I just need to go and ju- juice a walnut. <laughs> <laughs> that could be uh, misconstrued. Yeah. <laughs> That's a euphemism. That's a euphemism. <laughs> walnut ju- Where Did you read that? I read those, those words, yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. There's no such thing. Walnut oil would have... Ooh. I mean, I don't know what that would have done. That would have just made his skin oily. Well, it's like... Uh, Ooh, I could crush a walnut. I, do you, do, when you eat baked beans, do you refer to it as yes. tomato ketchup or bean juice? Uh, yeah, I do say bean juice. Neither. neither. Well, from now it's, on... It's, it's not the juice of the yeah, beans, but it's, it's the yeah, salt. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's called it baked bean juice. It comes with the bean. Well, now, from now on, I'm going to call it be, bean oil. <laughs> Would you oil yourself yes. to get out of... Um, oh, so, sorry. ...through a, There's more. a small hole? Or into a small hole. What, is that the reason? Or he wanted to no, co- that was, colour his skin? that was for colouration. I don't, yeah, I don't think you'd squeeze your face into a small <laughs> hole, would you? I don't know. It was only a few seconds ago that I realised that you could juice a wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, he used that for coloration, but basically he would manipulate his, his, his features. He would just pull faces and be unrecognisable. I mean, really? Yeah, really. I mean, there was an incident where he was in front of a wanted poster of himself. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. As you can see, it bears no relation to me. And he said to a policeman, he pointed at the wanted person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When were they ever going to catch this guy? Right, oh, OK. So that's how unrecognisable he was. He looks nothing like me! Fantastic. But at the time, he was yeah. poking his tongue out the corner of his mouth or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm liking this guy now. <laughs> well, yeah, or, don't like him too much. <laughs> I'm almost certainly not going to by the end of this, but uh, right now, right now, I'm on his side. <laughs> right, so the reason why we're talking about him is he had a rubbery face. Yeah. I mean, he's he's got a few more interesting uh, tangents to his adventures. Charles Peace. Charles Peace. Okay. So he was born in 1832 in Sheffield. I'm assuming it was an easy birth because he would have fashioned himself into (laughs) the shape of a torpedo. He used his already, he learned his escape skills in the womb. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, Mum. A man of steel. (laughs) I'll breathe in a bit and change the shape of my head for easy exit. (laughs) For egress. (laughs) Well, this being the Victorian times, he uh, at the age of 13, he had to go and work in a steel mill. Oh, God. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. One day, uh, a white-hot rod of steel fired out of the machine and went straight through his thigh. Oh, God. Um, oh. Just above the knee, basically making him now a, a cripple for life, effectively. Knee- kneeless. Right. And uh, there wasn't a lot of in the way of welfare state no. in the early 19th no. century. Did he then lose... Lose his leg below the knee, or was it no. just simply not a lot of good to him? Was it? Did he have any leg below the knee? Yeah, he still had the leg. Just, it was just the use of it was more limited. That's all. I mean, to be fair, I, what was it? A steel, a steel mill. Steel something? mill, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not going to have good accidents there, are you? 
<laughs> good so accidents. Go, What's a good accident? So, well, well, I don't know. You just trip trip over a wire, winning the lottery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. trip over you, a wire, you, yeah. or you and you fall down and you find a penny. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You stub your toe on a ladder, or you know, it's only ever going to be really awful accidents, yeah. isn't it? Not a lot of use for a first aid kit in a steel no, world. No, it's just it? pointless, isn't it? Ooh, I've got a, a minor burn. <laughs> I don't know why that was, I don't know why that went Alan Bennett there from <laughs> It did a bit. I reckon that would have happened on a weekly basis. Those kind of something equivalent yeah. of Yeah. Yeah, you look, have you heard about Albert? Yeah, he got his, he lost his arm because he got sucked into the whatever the cog. Yeah. It'd be awful. <laughs> I and mean, this is what mid nineteenth century. Isn't yeah, it? well, yeah, uh, yeah. Nothing would have been coned off. No, no, no. <laughs> there would have been no um, fluorescent. What are they called? V- vests. High vis going on. High vis. <laughs> sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard hat. Forget it. Yeah. No safety cage around the hammers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those half ton pounding hammers. <laughs> there would have been no notices. No. Charlie Peace just got a white hot rod of steel through oh his god. leg. Oh my god! Did he go and get another thirteen-year-old stat? Yeah. Mm. Time is money. Get on with it. Although to be fair, he um, recovered very well. So well, in fact, that he became an acrobat. Right. Using his hands, presumably. I wonder what kind of act it was. <laughs> it was well, an acrobat. I mean, he was. Uh, he, he had an extraordinary strength. He was well known for his strength, certainly in Sheffield. Mm. Um, upper arm you'd need it yeah. in there though. yes exactly uh, I've yeah, got yeah. an example of his uh, strength he once picked up a bulldog by its lower jaw <laughs> it beat it unconscious with his other hand oh god that's terrible yeah right. I mean he wasn't okay. again <laughs> okay this is this is the point I start to go off yeah, in yeah. <laughs> If there was a pivot point in this podcast, now yeah. is it. Is that the litmus test for strength? Well, it's an example that's been recorded. Oh, that's bloody awful. Um, but it proved he was quite strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he was strong. You've got the job. <laughs> He's strong. He knows his acrobatics. He learned to play the violin. He became quite good at violin. <laughs> Did he... Uh... So there's a... There is a gentle emotional side to him. <laughs> Did he hold the Beat neck the and smash end. the body? <laughs> <laughs> and stab someone with the bow? Basically, he joined a troupe of actors. So a tour, he was able to tour around do, like doing acrobatics and acting yeah, yeah, yeah. and violin and recitals and stuff like that. <laughs> yep, okay. But he also used his newfound agility and his handy violin case in a new career that he started for himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. As a cat burglar. Oh, oh okay. Oh. And say what? we're a hundred years too early for it to be covering and filled <laughs> with a gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he had his burglary tools concealed inside. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, what what was your 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 burglar's standard tools in the mid nineteenth century? Crowbar, I'm guessing lock picks. a kind of a a jemmy is just jemmy, about it. A jemmy, really. a large jemmy. Yeah, Maybe some lock, probably some lock picks of some fashion. Hammer. Yeah. A, a chisel. The skeleton Maybe of a, a dog. <laughs> a packed lunch. Tools! Tools! The duct tape, zip ties, and gloves! I have to have my tools! So, on yeah. the side, Cuddly toy. when he would turn up in a new town, yes. he'd go, I'll just be. Uh, I'm just going off for an hour. I've got a gig. I've got a gig, yeah. I suppose if you're good at it, you turn up in whatever, for the sake of argument, Barnsley, and go, I'm just off for an hour, and you do whatever you do, I'm at, um, steal, and then you come back, and then you probably do a gig, that lit- an actual gig that night, and then the next morning you are gone. Mm. I mean, it's quite a good little method, really. I'm not entirely yeah. sure what he'd nick. What would he nick? Anything, Money. Well, yeah, cash. Anything. Yeah, 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 Jewelries. Whatever they've got in houses silver, that he can... Cutlery. Yeah. Something that isn't that's probably small because he's probably not that mobile but but it sounds like he could probably carry a wardrobe out of there <laughs> well yeah <laughs> it's strong a wardrobe full of bulldogs <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah why not um oh, i don't know if he was that good at it because by 1872 he'd been in jail four times oh okay <laughs> oh, okay right. and spent about 15 <laughs> years in jail up to that point oh, for right. burglary right wow so he, he was caught a right. lot you are an habitual criminal who accepts arrest as an occupational hazard and presumably accepts imprisonment in the same casual manner. How, how old is he, sorry, at this point? So he'd be 40. Okay, right. 
Okay. So let's hope he's better at the violin than he is at Robin. <laughs> he probably is, yeah, yeah. What he did was he started carrying a revolver. This is where it starts to go right. downhill. Go go serious. Well, he's, yeah, he's not very good at the running away bit, is he, with only yeah. one leg? He's, well, so, yeah, a gun might come in handy. He started carrying it strapped to his wrist for some reason, rather than in like a, a Easy. pocket or a holster. Like an impromptu superhero. Yeah. Easy access, yeah, exactly, like... Yeah. Just kind of a little flick of the wrist and you've got it in your hand. Kind of yeah, thing. well, that's probably what he was doing when he shot his own finger off. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine that's exactly what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he was experimenting with cartridges and he f- shot off his left uh, forefinger. Oh, God. So there'll be several chords that he can't reach anymore. There's going to be some noticeable moments of silence in his recital. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have only had three fingered. If that's his bowing hand, it's not so bad, but. <laughs> Oh, right, okay. So he's down to three fingers. One finger, one leg. <laughs> Keep moving. Uh, is, that the, yeah. is that the song? Something like that. <laughs> so by 1875, Peace is married, and he moves to a village called Darnall with his wife. His wife's named Hannah, and has got a stepson named Willie. Yep. Who'd, who'd marry him? He's quite a chancer, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. she an idiot? I mean... He's not even a... He's an ugly one, guy, yeah. to start with. Yeah. Sure. He had a weird sort of a way with women. Face. <laughs> had a weird rubbery yeah, face. Yeah. There's no mistaking the Him. visual similarities with Steptoe. Yeah. Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> Wilfred B. Ramble. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's unavoidable, really, and I think that, that, that comes in later, doesn't it, with the media? Yeah, although it is to be reiterated that in a picture he looks like Wilfred Bramble slash Albert yeah. Steptoe. Yep. However, in other pictures, he looks nothing like that at all because he was able to change his appearance. So he looked, yeah, yeah, yeah. in all the pictures of him, he looks different. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so they they moved somewhere. So he moved to the village of Darnall with his wife and stepson. But he, he yep. took a shine to a neighbour called Mrs. Catherine Dyson. All right. Now, she lived with her husband, Arthur, who was a railroad engineer. And he uh, basically started to worm his way into her affections, let's say. Okay. Mm-hmm. And she responded. Oh, right. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife. I wonder if he, he fashioned himself into a handsome young man. <laughs> so it would seem. Using the power of his rubbery face. <laughs> yeah, so it would seem. Now, they were they were out and about of, on more than one occasion, um, just sort of seen. And there's, above the houses, because they were neighbours, above the houses there's an, an attic. It's a conjoining attic that ran along. Yep, yep. So they would meet up there in the, in the attic. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that kind of notion from the open quotes, olden <laughs> days. That you could go up onto the roof, you know, chim chimney, and meet with your neighbours up there. <laughs> yeah, I would love that idea. Really? Would you? A, yeah. <laughs> would you? There's, there's some kind of secret. Well, I would hope that the neighbours I find up there will be. Do you find up there? <laughs> <laughs> the other, the ones you stashed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, apparently she then decided that she was tired of him and didn't want to see him anymore. Okay. But he he became really? kind of infatuated with this oh, this, right. this woman. Did he have lofty ambitions? Oh. oh. <laughs> His overtures to Mrs. Dyson were so pronounced and well known that um, Mr. Dyson, Arthur, he threw a visiting card into Charles's garden. Oh, crumbs. It had a message on it that said, Charles Peace is requested not to interfere with my family. Right. Hey, you, get your damn hands off her. So just one, a note into the garden, basically. Yes. It was quite formal. Well, yeah, yeah. Rather cowardly. Cowardly, yeah. Why? He wasn't willing to go up to the door and pop it through the letterbox. Yeah, yeah. He just tossed it into the garden. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It might never have been yeah, found. Well. well, that's true. Did it work? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. No. Fine. If anything, it made things worse. Probably because yeah, he right. thought, okay. well, this guy's a coward and I could whack him around the head with a bulldog. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Peace is, you know, he's not, I don't, I don't get the idea that he's frightened of much. No. I know what you mean. And a, a man who's not willing to deliver a note is not really much of a threat. No, he isn't, is he? No. He's, t- he's clearly got the upper hand. He's having an affair with his mm. wife. He's yeah. been in and out of prison for various mm-hmm. things. Yeah. He has choked a bulldog. <laughs> yep, <laughs> punched a bulldog. Um, he is presumably quite. He is very strong, but 
he's probably quite yeah. visually strong as well, isn't he? In the sense of yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming I I put him down to be uh, when you say acrobat, yes. I think of the bloke who does the catching on <laughs> what's it called the the swinging. Um, it was called the catcher. Yeah, on the trapeze. On the trapeze. trapeze. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was Burt Lancaster in from from out of trapeze, <laughs> but he he was the catcher. Hmm. I, I, I don't know why, but I just assume that is his role basically, where you spend most of your life up, hanging upside down and you fling fling other people, and he hmm. continued that fling into a, his own private a, life. Get it? A a, 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 a. See what he did there? Wordplay. That's what yeah. that is. Wordplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. I, I assume he was more of a tumbler, being as he used his skills as a burglar. That he was like a yeah, someone true. who flipped and rolled and somersaulted, rather than just swung backwards and forwards <laughs> on a hoop. <laughs> or walked. Or walked. A dangler. Yeah. Or walked. You could have just walked there. No. I have to somersault all the way there. <laughs> Where is um, Darnell? It's a village outside Sheffield. Fine. So by the middle of 1875, Mrs. Dyson was out on the street gossiping with some neighbours when uh, Peace appeared out of nowhere, basically walked up to her and threatened her with a revolver. I thought he liked her. Thanks. Yeah, because she detached herself from him. She wasn't uh, didn't want anything else to do with him. I want you to love me. That's always, okay, a, okay. that's always a good ploy, isn't it? The next step is, if I can't have her, no one can. Yeah, basically. And then it's good night, missus. Is that what we're leading up to? Well, yeah, yeah, kind of. I mean, his threat didn't, did basically achieve the opposite, much like uh, Arthur course, Dyson's card yeah. achieved the opposite. Yes, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're basically, they're not, neither of them is very good at this, basically. No, no, clearly. So the uh, they, instead of uh, folding to his threat, they took him to court. Oh, right, okay. But, uh, or they tried to take him to court. He didn't answer the summons. He didn't want to go before a magistrate with his records. So yes, he didn't answer okay. the summons. So a warrant was put out for his arrest and he disappeared. Yeah, yeah, you don't get much choice if you've been summoned. Well, yeah, yeah. So he, done a, he did a runner, basically. So the dice, as far as the dice was concerned, their troubles were over. For now. Cut to adverts, come back. Enter into the situation, Police Constable Nicholas Cock. Nicholas Cock. <laughs> yeah, yes. Bloody Nora. The best name. Right. So, the, the uh, Police Constable... He was a growing member of the police force, was he? <laughs> he was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He was a member of the hardened constabulary. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Whoa there. Uh, Don't uh, come back with your facts. No. <laughs> Did he did he follow the penal code? <laughs> <laughs> Insert knob gag here. <laughs> Constable Cock and Constable Beanland. What was he? Sorry, what was he called? Beanland. Beanland. Land of the beans. Beanland and Cock. That sounds. Um, I mean, to be fair, that sounds like a seventies yeah. acoustic duo. <laughs> <laughs> or crime fighting duo, or cr- yeah, yeah. criminal duo. Oh my god, it's Beanland and Cock. Let's get out of it. As we've now established, all dual surnames are either 70s yeah. folk duos or, or criminal criminals, masterminds. Or detectives. But in this case, detectives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So they noticed a uh, movement of a figure being suspicious around a detached house. And uh, Beanland went to the front and Cock went to the rear. Hey! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no, please. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> on guard oh dear and uh, Peace leapt back from the rear wall of the detached property and landed right on cock really? oh dear was he somewhat deflated? <laughs> <laughs> is that true? he jumped and landed did he deliberately land on him? did he stamp no, on cock? Delib- it wasn't deliberately by pure coincidence by pure coincidence so he leapt up and pulled out his revolver and said you know stand back or I'll shoot I don't want to kill you, and you don't want to be dead. Now, Constable, the Constable. <laughs> yep. Let's call him Constable. Yep. That's quite a move, from landing in someone's yeah. arms to holding a revolver to their face. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's a chess move. 
So he pulled a gun out. Pulled out his revolver, strapped to his wrist. Oh yeah, uh-huh. that right. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wonder if it was a different a different wrist because having learned what to the one that was yeah. attached to the gun. No, the the one that <laughs> blew off. Oh, right. Well, presumably because now he's got a space for the bullet to pass by. <laughs> so the constable goes for his truncheon, and Peace said, uh, "Stand back, or I'll shoot." But the constable kept on coming, so he fired a shot wide. That's a fair warning. And uh, right. the constable still tried to grab him. So he basically, the next shot, he hit him in the chest. I don't, and this might be apocryphal, but apparently he, he said, uh, murder, murder, I'm shot. Hold me closer, in. It's getting dark. No one would say that, well, would they? <laughs> no, not, probably no. not, no, no. <laughs> no one has ever shouted, I've been murdered. <laughs> so, so in summary... <laughs> <laughs> I've been fired upon to... and a bullet has penetrated my chest cavity. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. The other constable, Beanland, he uh, he raced to his aid but uh, and he said, who shot you? And PC Cock, his last words were, I don't know. Yeah. I... <laughs> it's helpful. Mm. I would argue he does know, but he was probably in a in, not in a fit I, state. I, I'm not sure he's protecting anyone. No, well, yeah. <laughs> Now, the thing is, there was some three young Irish fellas who had threatened the constable a few days before. So the, In an unconnected... Ooh, completely unrelated. Contretemps. Yeah. Yep. So the police did a raid and arrested them. <sighs> right. Okay. Right. Okay. Contextually, that sounds And of fair course, enough. given the small amount of circumstantial evidence against them, i.e. people hearing them threatening him... Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. One of them, William Habron... The 18-year-old was sentenced to death. What? (laughs) Such was the limit for evidence in those days. Yeah. The two constables turn up at a detached house. One of them gets landed on. They weren't looking for peace, were they? No, they they saw saw somebody at the house. Hello, what's going on here? uh, Do you notice I used the uh, (laughs) historical usage of the word hello there? (laughs) Hello. Hello, hello, what's going on here? That's a um, yeah. That's that's true, isn't it? It's yeah. a. Uh, it was a view uh, hello. It's a, a like a a, ca- a call, mm. an out call. Well, it was. It was a hello. hello. It's an expression the, of surprise. Hello, 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 there. hello. What's this? I'm 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 uh, even though this are is you, a recording. Are you holding a, I'm holding, a metaphorical I'm holding, pipe? Yeah. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tapping I'm your holding, finger onto I'm the holding end. Holding a pipe, and uh, and while I'm I'm doing that, I'm lighting it, <laughs> tapping it. Obviously, point, pointing the po- pointing the piece at the house. Hello, yeah. hello. What's going on here then? So right, so they went to this house. They were merely having a look at a house. Yeah. So one of them goes around the back and has no idea who jumps, the, who the person who jumps on top of him, no. or who shoots him. No. Right. Okay. So yeah. understandably, but rather racistly, <laughs> they went. It's probably those two, uh, three Irish blokes. Well, they all said they all threatened him. They said they were going to shoot him. Lo and behold, right, he gets okay. shot. So must have uh, been them. Okay, right. Unfortunately for them, yeah. So they go and uh, they go and arrest these uh, these these brothers. Chaps. Yep. The Habron brothers, and one of them, the younger brother, eighteen. He um, the jury takes two and a half hours to consider its verdict, and he's found guilty, condemned to death. Now, the, that is later commuted oh. to 20 years penal servitude. Oh, practically sent him home to mum. Yeah, well, it's going to be breaking rocks for the next 20 years. So, Is this after yeah. his death? <laughs> yeah, you're going to, be, <laughs> going to be hanged till dead and then 20 years. Oh, OK, so he wasn't oh. ultimately sentenced, but it was pretty bad. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Well, it wasn't him, obviously. No, it wasn't. No. Just said, I'm going to get you copper. And then two days later, he said, Unfortunately for him, breaking. the copper got got. Yeah, uh, Peace was in the gallery at the court proceedings. So he, really? Yeah, he went to make sure that Habron went down in his crime. Pulling a face up there. Yeah. Of of yeah. laughter, probably. Putting on a happy face. Go on. Peace was in the. Why would, it, why it would you go to that? Well, so he knew it was free and clear because someone had been found yeah, guilty. Yeah, so sure, they're not yeah. looking for the killer of. Cock. Yeah. Must have been laughing his head off. <laughs> the killer of cock. Yeah. Yeah. God, not looking for anyone who put cock away. <laughs> no. Oh dear. So it basically it did stand up in court. And for the for the death of, of Constable Cock, that poor fellow was shafted. Oh my god. He was. <laughs> oh co- all right, enough. <laughs> You're gonna you've got a tough job editing this one. <laughs>
he meets up with the Dysons again. Okay. And says, right. um, you know, I'm here, you know, you'll never escape me. I'm still here. God, that's got to suck. So this is the day after the trial, when Habron went to prison. Yeah. He went to a pub in Sheffield, peace, where he started drinking heavily. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all there is to do in Sheffield. Well, that's yeah, that's all there is to do anywhere at the moment. Now, after a few hours of getting intoxicated, he decides to stagger off um, and he disappears in the direction of the Dyson's home. Uh, okay, yep, yep. I wonder what he's going to do. About nine o'clock in the evening, Mrs. Dyson walked down into the back garden, going to the outside lavvy. Of course, yep. Mm-hmm. Opens the door. Guess who's sat inside on the throne? Oh, dear. Oh. Only one Charlie oh. piece. What? Using it or hiding? <laughs> Do you mind? Do you mind? I'm good lord. Do you mind going to the toilet. So yeah, he grabbed for her. She screamed, ran away. Oh yeah, as, as you would. would. Arthur heard the scream. He ran out into the garden. Yeah, gave him a card. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he threw a, a card. Threw a card the out. from the upstairs window. Yeah. <laughs> Stop chasing my wife very slowly because of your disability <laughs> so confronted by Arthur Dyson Peace pulled out his revolver again fired one uh, not again fired at him in the dark and by presumably a sheer fluke shot him in the head oh god really oh. yeah god if there's anything I've learnt from doing this yes. series is not to shoot in the dark yeah, I know. randomly yeah. at people because always... you almost certainly will <laughs> yeah, shoot yeah, them yeah. in the forehead whether you've sawn off the barrel and are using the yeah. wrong bullets or whatever, you know, exactly. <laughs> you're going to hit exactly, that. Yeah. Right, so he shot Dyson. He shot Dyson. Dyson's down. Two hours later, he's dead. He clung on for a Gosh. couple of hours with a bullet in the head. Wow. That's kind of smart, isn't it? Exactly. So now you've got a nationwide manhunt for the killer. Oh, uh, okay. But they knew who he was. Is it they nationwide, was. really? Yeah. An hour or so later from a man being shot in, in Sheffield... Good point. And I, yeah. Isn't it a Darnell wise? If the people in Dorset are going, oh, you know what? We better find him. Yeah, within two miles radius, wide search. Well, <laughs> yeah, there was not um, any further. There were wanted posters going up everywhere with a hundred pound reward on. Wow, that that is a bucket load of money. This was the poster that he. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the example I gave earlier about pointing at the wanted poster was, was about was, this. Was this, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, was it? Wow. That is some gall. That's some gall. I know we like to check what the value of money yeah, is. Yeah, we do. Don't. So we have a hundred quid. A hundred quid back then is roughly ten to twelve thousand pounds now. Yeah, really? exactly. I've got. I've got eleven and a half thousand. Wow. So yeah, but yeah. That's I mean, pretty good. I mean, it's like, pretty good. It's very. Good. <laughs> it's very good. It's quite. Well, that's pretty good now. Yeah. In fact, that's very good now. I'd have no <laughs> issue with that. <laughs> so he's on the run, or on the hop. So he first of all he f- he fled he fled to Hull. He had a brother's house there. Uh, okay, right, right. While he's there, he picks up a mistress. Yeah, blimey. Name of Sue Bailey. This guy has better luck than any of us. Well, yeah, yeah. He's and he's hideously ugly. Yeah, and what does that say? Dangerous. I think I've pi- I think I've realised what women like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you Rue, Have you murdered a bulldog recently? Not recently. No. I think you. I think you'd better start doing it. <laughs> You'll yeah. be kicking him off. <laughs> <laughs> now, he was in bed with her when the police turned up. Oh, God, we are, isn't even... <laughs> well, he's barely just turned up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is this? So we're not talking three weeks later. Is this a carry-on film or something? <laughs> I, I know, it's weird, isn't it? It's the most... There's police... It's like Keystone Cops just running everywhere. Confessions of a much, murderous burglar. Uh, yeah, yeah. How much time has passed? He's literally just turned up in Hull. Yeah. Five minutes later, he's... Basically. Where's me trousers? I'm out the window. Well, no, you're not far wrong, because the police were there out doing routine raids, looking for receivers of stolen property. They weren't there for him. So <laughs> Seems a lot of coincidence with police work, doesn't it? But then I suppose if there weren't these coincidences that led to the result, yeah, sure, we would yeah. never have heard of it. Well, exactly, That's yeah, true. yeah. So he, uh, he squeezed out the through the bars... Of the window. Ah, the old walnut juice. What? <laughs> so she <laughs> coming in handy. Sorry. Why why is he why why has he picked up a woman who has bars on her bedroom window? <laughs> because they didn't have much uh, much other Glass. security, you know. <laughs> he did a bunch of burglaries in Hull and then he decided it was getting a bit too dangerous. So then they go on a train to London. 
Now, interesting thing about this trip down to London, he meets someone on the train named of William Marwood. Here we go. Five minutes later, they had an affair. <laughs> By the time they reached London, they had three children. (laughs) Well, William Marwood was actually the official executioner. Right. The Albert Pierpoint of the time. Yeah, and of the the time and of the the region, I suppose. William Marwood is interesting because he invented the long drop. Oh. So when we talked, we've talked before about the ma- manner of hanging and we, where it's basically now you, you measure the rope according to your body weight and everything and you basically fall yes. through a trap door and break the neck. Yes. Up, and, yeah. up until William Marwood, it was the strangling method where you have it round your neck and you're pulled up. Uh, and your airways right. are yeah. okay. so you're basically blocked. Yeah. But the long you're drop... You're strangled rather yeah. than hung. Strangled hanged, rather. The long drop is meant, designed to kill you. To break your neck, yeah. He, he, yeah. he invented okay. that, William Marwood. Oh, okay. Very interesting. So they coincidentally got chatting, and that was it. Yeah, they were just they had a chat. On having the train. A ch- two blokes having a chat. Right. Yeah. yeah. Peace said, uh, shook his hand, and he said, uh, "If you ever have to do the job for me, be sure you grease the rope well to let me slip." <laughs> <laughs> With walnut juice. With walnut juice. Yeah. <laughs> Peace then arrives in Peckham in yep. London, oh, right. Peckham which arrived. I would say at the time was posh. What, in, in the mid-19th century? Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I, as soon as you say that, I don't know. <laughs> but it, at some point, it was very posh. At some point, it has been certainly posh. Yes, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I reckon it was then. But anyway, yes, he arrived there. Yep. Why did he go there? Well, presumably for the pickings. Pickings of Peckham. Oh, right. Oh, OK. Oh, oh so there you go. Posh. That, there we that go. probably proves it. Yeah. But then it only has to be posher than the burglar. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. But coincidental to Peace's arrival in, in London, there's a, a spate of burglaries in the area. Oh, I see. Now that he's yeah, arrived. Okay. Right, 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 right. Including right. Lord Shaftesbury's home, oh. wow, which wow. was raided and, and apparently half his belongings were taken. Blimey. That was probably That's, a lot. That is some work. Either that guy's not got a lot of stuff... Well, or... Yes, <laughs> he only owned <laughs> two books, and yeah. he nicked one of them. <laughs> yeah, and then six weeks later, he was attacked again, and the other half was stolen. <laughs> <laughs> now you must have help. That with is that. audacious. If he's, if he's yeah. he must have had help. He's he's meant to be apparently disabled. Yeah, and it, I mean it depends what he nicked, I suppose. But I'm presuming we're not talking about wardrobes. And we're just talking. My about apologies for using modern parlance, but someone is fencing the gear. Yeah, yeah, one assumes, but it's probably most likely going to be you know pub situation. Yeah, I've got some right. silver. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Give me a shilling. Or whatever. I have a yeah. walnut wardrobe <laughs> yeah. that needs yeah, yeah. oiling. Something like that. There's another tale apparently that um, he broke into an office and he couldn't get into the safe. It was you know it was quite a stubborn. Um, so what he did was he left the office where he was breaking into. He broke into the home of the guy whose office it was, stole the keys to the safe from his trousers really? while he slept, went back to the office and opened that's the safe. That's very clever. Yeah. That's how that's audacious good, he yeah. was. As a... That's a good, intelligent burglar. <laughs> what, I wonder what was in it. Some money. So, yeah, or... Some cash and value. Oh, it was the um, it was the combination to the big safe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. an even it's one bigger larger safe. Than the last. <laughs> so on October the tenth, now yeah, which is still eighteen seventy eight. So there's uh, another two police officers on the beat, PC Girling and PC Robinson, and they saw some movement in a house. And uh, PC Girling went round the front to to ring the doorbell. Mm-hmm. This is at night, obviously, and PC Robinson went to the back door. So this is a very, kind of like similar to the story of. Well, I was going to say, I, I thought we'd, I thought you'd forgotten about the other <laughs> anecdote, but right, okay. So one went to the front, one went to, went to the back. It's your classic yeah. out. Yes, in this with this bloke, the one round the back gets landed on, yeah, and shot. <laughs> well, it's close. I mean, yeah. Um, so Robinson's at the back door, and Charlie PC flees out the back. Yes, as is his style. And he, again, he pulled his gun. Robinson rushed at him to take him down, and Peace fired four or five shots. I'm not sure wow. how many. The last one hit wow. Robinson in the arm. Okay. And Robinson pinned him down. He basically, the momentum kept him going. He just landed on Peace, basically, and he yep. just held him down. Girling, who had been around the front, he ran up and he fetched Peace a mighty blow with his truncheon on his gun arm. I'll bash him brutally. 
and he dropped his gun. Oh, and he's okay. now yep. he's under arrest. They've caught him. Quite the fracas. Right. And they okay. looked at each other and they looked back at Peace and said, he doesn't look anything like him. <laughs> well, they didn't know who he was right. at the time. It was just a guy in the house. No. Ah, right. Oh, okay. And this is where he, he demonstrates his, his uh, prowess with changing his appearance. So he's now in, uh, he's in jail. His name is, uh, is given as John Ward. Right. He's in jail awaiting trial for the attempted murder of Rob... Of a policeman, yes. But the neighbours, the residents of Peckham, know that him as Thompson. Mm-hmm. His name's being given as John Ward, so they're like going, well, we don't know a Ward or a Thompson. Who, who is nope. this guy? So they've got police chiefs coming from all the districts all around London, coming down to the jail cell to try and see if anyone recognises him. Mm. But he would pop his head in and out of the bars with a different expression. <laughs> you go, hey, eh? who, who am I now? Who's this then? Really? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I so, so want see. to see this guy's life played by Jim Carrey. It, it's just, <laughs> it's just written for him. He's like um, Zelig, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. The film Zelig. The um, uh, I always, I always get the impression that people were just so gullible back then. A- anything, just you know, you could say, yeah, actually, I'm. Uh, I'm the King of England. Oh, are you? Oh, okay. You know, it's just if you've got enough assertivity, yeah, if you could do anything, really. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, <laughs> everything is completely hearsay. So if anyone says anything, you just believe it. So he'd, um, they'd say, I don't know, the Chief Inspector of um, a different London borough is here. Put your head through the bars, please. <laughs> so he'd go, <laughs> and then. And they, oh, right, okay, no, I'm not sure who he is. Okay, put it back. There's another chief inspector. Put your head through the bars, please, Mr. Ward. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Different every time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And he'd say, hey, look, would you recognise me? Would you stand before a judge and say this was me or whatever? Like that? And, the, and the prison officers at no point said... This is the same person. There's only one person in that <laughs> in that cell. It's just him. Just he's putting on a face. <laughs> Why doesn't anyone believe him? You know, there, there shouldn't really be any mistake by the people who work there. It's him. It's the same bloke. Nobody thought to show a photograph round, you know. <laughs> Or, or just look at him the entire time. Stop going round the corner and coming back. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't change hats. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Can I just have a shave, please? Has <laughs> um, anyone got any walnuts? There's, a, there's an arm coming out the side of the door. The different sleeve. Um, okay, right, so they haven't... <laughs> There, because of his brilliant idea of giving out various surnames, that completely confuses the whole um, uh, thing, basically, doesn't it? Yeah, basically, simple as that, really. But if you remember, there's a hundred pound reward out for him. Yes, of course, a lot yeah. of money, which is lots of yeah. money. So his uh, his devoted mistress Sue Bailey, otherwise known as Sue Thompson, wanders into the jail. And says, uh, actually, that's yeah, Charlie Peace. Can I have £100, please? Ah, backstabbing. I mean, good honour. Does that work? Yeah. So it works. Oh, yeah. Right, right. She doesn't get the money, obviously. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> so it doesn't work at all. They never do. <laughs> they never do, do they? Oh, right, right. I don't know. It doesn't work for her, but it works for the authorities who, who now have understand who they've got. Right, so right, Peace right, stands right. for So uh, goes to stand trial at the Old Bailey. Uh, Central Criminal Court um, for the attempted murder of PC Robertson. He's sentenced to uh, life imprisonment, but because now they know they've got Charlie Peace, he has to go to Sheffield for for other crimes means, for the trial for um, Dyson's yes, murder. Yes, yes. Now that uh, has its own interesting um, eventualities because he's he's in prison in Pentonville, which is in North London. He's going to trial at Leeds Assizes, so he's got to be transferred two hundred miles. Yeah, so he's going back and forth over a couple of days for for the trial, obviously for the different sessions of the hearing. On the way, on one of his trips on the way there, he decided to leap from the train. He made it a, another audacious escape <laughs> attempt. Good. Yep. He, he jumped off the train. Um, it wasn't a hugely successful one because he basically he landed and knocked himself oh. unconscious, and he's just lying in a heap at the side of the track. Okay. So you'd think he'd be locked, he'd be tied up or locked up, but anyway. 
Obviously, obviously he wasn't. His hands were chained. Oh, uh, okay, all right, fine, yeah. So he jumped from the train. Yeah, I mean, he, he didn't, as I say, he didn't get very far, but I mean, it was so, it was such a highly publicised trial. You know, he's yep. very famous, he's hugely famous. The word went out very quickly that he'd escaped and the chief constable had to, to stand up in front of the town, uh, Sheffield Town Hall because there was a crowd gathering there and he had to assure them that he'd been recaptured. Has he really oh, okay. escaped, though, if he's just fallen off unconscious? <laughs> it's not really much of an escape. Oh, so they they stopped the train and went and got him, kind of thing? Yeah, basically. As opposed to saying, oh, well... <laughs> <laughs> See you in Sheffield. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so he was re he was recaptured. He was recaptured pretty quickly. Yeah, um, he went to trial for the murder of Dyson, and the jury took ten minutes to find him wow. guilty. Oh, wow! So he is sentenced to be hanged. I'd sure appreciate it, sir, if you could find it in your heart to hang him up by his neck until he was dead. That's pretty much just counting names, isn't it? Ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. AI, one, two, three, four. Yeah. You know, that's, that'll take I mean, that think, long I to file defense... out and get into the room. You know? If there is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. if there was such a thing as a defence lawyer, would there have been? Presumably there would have been. Lawyer, time. yeah. Defence lawyer. I think that, I think he would have, a good one, could have got him off, basically, that particular one. Because it was dark and they didn't know who shot him and... You know, you could. That's easy to get rid of that. But anyway, yeah. Well, it was mostly because the, the main witness was um, Mrs. Dyson, who basically just denounced him and said, "Oh yes, the other, the other it. wife of the, the, the wife of the man who he killed." So he's yes, on trial for yes. Dyson's killing. Right. Okay. Aside from the fact that he's just come directly from a trial in London for attempted murder of another policeman, so it kind of like. Ordinarily, you would never know about that mm. first, and it can't be taken into consideration, uh, really. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But obviously, this time. Yeah. But this one, yeah, it was a. It was basically. She said it was him. I mean, she was quite vociferous in her. Was um sorry for the first, the London trial. What was he? What was his verd? Obviously guilty. But what was his? Um, what did he get? Life imprisonment. Life imprisonment. Yeah. So he then went to Sheffield, and he was guilty. And they wanted to hang him. Because that was murder and the other one was attempted murder. So could he have said, can I do my life in prison first? (laughs) (laughs) Or instead? But it it superseded it, did it? It's all that killing a policeman business again, isn't it? It, He served um, concurrently. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to stay in prison for the rest of your life while you're hung. Hang him for life, however long that is. 30 years in prison and then we're going to hang you. Well, he was uh, he was magnanimous about it. He was quite um, a religious man, and he said he's he's quoted as saying, "What is the scaffold? It's just a shortcut to heaven." Yeah, well, mm. could be argued, but yeah. He confessed to the murder of uh, PC Cop. Great. Oh right, yeah, yeah. I forgot about him. Even yeah, though we spent ten minutes on him. <laughs> so this guy who'd been been in prison breaking rocks for however many years, he uh, he finally got released, and he was given eight hundred pounds. Gosh. compensation wow that's a lot of money so we, what did we say we said 100 pounds about, was 10, about 10 to 12, 12 grand, grand. Yeah. so he was given 100 grand basically yeah <laughs> nice one sorry we put you in a, in a mm. cell and had you smashing that's not a bad salary for, for smashing rocks yeah well, I mean he was super lucky because originally he would have been hanged yeah. but um, it was commuted to imprisonment yeah. so uh, okay. I suppose you could put that one up with the uh, the times we've talked about you know Ellis and Evans and Bentley about you know, maybe hanging's not a good idea. I know, yeah. No. I, imagine, imagine how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases that would have occurred. Mm. Oh, actually, uh, turns out, turns out it wasn't. Yeah. But arguably, hanging, hanging saves a lot of money in, uh, you know, in apology money. Yeah, yeah, yeah you've got yeah. a point. Yeah, economically, it's it's much. Hang better. on, yeah. For any, I would say, it's a good lesson going forward. Any, any hanging for anything, traffic offence. <laughs> uh, just hang them. Just hang them. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, two hundred years ago, there were there were about a thousand crimes you could be hanged for. Yeah, sure. Inclu- yeah. Including, and my favourite one, impersonating a Chelsea pensioner. <laughs> a Chelsea pensioner. Yeah, yeah right. you could be hanged for that. Putting on a hat and coat. A red, a red one. Yep. Cool. Right. 
So he was hanged by uh, William Marwood, as I said, to the man named he met on the on the train. Oh carriage. yes, right, of course. So that came. We meet that came again true in the end. See, this is per- this is perfect for a film. <laughs> it's it is, great. It? it would yeah, make yeah. a fantastic. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Nice little callback. Yeah, I've got a great. Um, there was a, a poem at the time, very short one about William Marwood, as well, which I really like. It's a nice and easy one. Yep. Okay, it goes: If Pa killed Ma, who'd kill Pa? Marwood. Me. Hey. Good, isn't very it? Good. I like that one. Yeah, that's very good. Okay, so I've got a few bits on popular culture, but we are talking a long time ago. Okay. So in the, we're talking early 20th century. Well, no, I think I've seen that one. Have you? Is it silent? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. Totally. Oh, right. Okay. Is there a piano <laughs> doing minor choirs? <laughs> um, near the there, there probably is, but it's playing bits. silently. <laughs> I know that's bullshit. I was doing a a kind of vaudeville accompaniment, but but no, (laughs) it's bullseye. What have you have you actually seen that film? It's um, I mean it's not it's not the best of black and white silent comedies. (laughs) It's uh, it's not quite up there, but uh, yeah, it's no. I mean, he his name has been mentioned in, by Mark Twain, P.G. Wodehouse, in their books. Right. He's in a Sherlock Holmes story, I think. His name is just mentions of him, so he's okay. obviously well known. Right. There was a play in 1927 uh, about him, and the role of the hangman, it wasn't called William Marwood, the character was called John Ellis. And the reason the character was instead called John Ellis is because it was played by John Ellis. And now John Ellis, we've mentioned before, because he was yes. an actual hangman was... who played the hangman. Wow. He's the man who hanged Dr. Crippen. Oh, yes. So the man who actually hanged Dr. Crippen played the man who hanged Charles Peace. Brackets as himself. So at that time, had he done the hanging several years previously? Yes. And yeah. become an actor? I think he was just brought in for, the, for that play. Did a bit right. of acting on the side. Yeah, just for the commu- <laughs> a confusing future cross references that would cause. Yeah, well, he'd re- he'd retired as an official hangman by that point, so that, I think they just oh, said, okay. "Oh, let, let's get another, yeah. let's get Ellis in." Someone must have known him and thought that would be good. Wouldn't it be yeah. fun to put that on the on the yeah. play on the playbill to say, "Got an actual, your actual hangman, real life there, hangman." I mean, you'd you'd you'd, you'd think he wouldn't want to publicise that, but perhaps he was seen as a kind of cool bloke. Yeah, he was hangman. You know, John, you never guess what he used to be. It's interesting because some some of them seem to be widely well known and mm. some of them mm. don't. Well, I would say understandably don't want to be in any way in the public. Yeah. Then their name yeah, being public. As Pierpoint you know, anyway. sort of very sharply discovered through his life. You know? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, when we mentioned, uh, we mentioned the, when we talked about the Canada, Turpin and the Lucas Canada, in Canada, Killings, yep. their hangman always had the same name. It was given uh, a, a, like a pseudonym. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is quite right. Which ironically was his name was Ellis, oh. but uh, <laughs> that, was, that was the name that they used. Of course, it was. <laughs> I mean, I, that's completely understandable. Um, there was a, a comic strip in Buster Comics in the sixties. Yep. Uh, called the Astounding Adventures of Charlie. Oh Peace. wow! Really? Yeah, 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 oh and it was the Charlie Peace. It was, it was a comic children's comic strip. Oh, so this is and a lowercase would... comic strip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's yeah. Buster, isn't it? That was like the Beano. So was it he would get into scrapes and then change, do a different expression? <laughs> yeah, it would be a... It wasn't me, Gov. I'm going to get this swag and then all the yes. coppers have rumbled me, Lorks, yeah. and it makes a run for it. Hang on. That's you get one it. of your junior illustrators to do it because it doesn't matter if he draws a different character in every frame. Yeah. <laughs> that is possibly a <laughs> exactly, bonus. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The, the, if, in, exactly. The, the clever thing is doing the same drawing every time. But junior illustrator, <laughs> <laughs> he's rubbish. G- yeah. Give him the job. Yeah. yeah, quite right. I've got uh, one more thing. So, 1964, the film Hard Day's Night. Yes. Uh, yes. With the Beatles. Yeah. The police refer to Ringo at one point as Charlie Peace. Oh yeah. As a that rascal, Charlie right. Peace. A rascal, right? So, uh, and um, Wilfred Bramble, who yes. we've mentioned to us <laughs> already, he's in the yeah, first. So scene. He shares one of one of his faces with Charlie Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he, yeah, exactly. He's, he's in that film, and he says in a line saying, "Oh, once he, Ringo's referred to as Charlie Peace, Bramwell says 
the police will have the poor lad in the bridewell. Now, what he means by that is the bridewell is a prison in Leeds. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, the time where peace would have been held for a while. Yep. It's it's still there. It's actually underneath the town hall in Leeds. It, it can be visited. It's in the cellars. Oh, wow. And it's supposedly it's haunted by the ghost Ooh. of Charlie Peace. <laughs> nice. He could definitely make it a film, though. He could, so It's yeah. a hell of a story, he yeah. Could. Now, I spotted, uh, I spotted there was actually a play about Charlie Peace uh, called Charlie Peace... His Amazing Life and Astounding Legend. Mm. And, uh, Sounds all right. Yeah, well, it's, it's a stellar cast. So when was this? this 1927? Was, no, this is uh, 2013. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah, 2013 at Excellent. the Nottingham Playhouse. Very good. Well, only there. Um, as far as I know, as far <laughs> as I know, it was only showing at the Nottingham Playhouse. I hope it okay. did a tour. It really deserves to have done. Well, it should have done Sheffield. <laughs> it should have done... Is there a Peckham... <laughs> Peckham Playhouse Peckham Playhouse, yeah, surely it should have gone there <laughs> um, So it should have gone to Sheffield And the Sheffield What would that be called? The Sheffield Adelphi <laughs> yep. And it should go to the Peckham Playhouse And what do you say? Le- what do you think? Leeds, Leeds. The Leeds uh, Theatre Garrick, the Leeds Garrick <laughs> Okay, fine um, so it could have done a little tour of it, his places. But anyway, sorry, carry on about Charlie and his amazing... Technicolor <laughs> dream coat. <laughs> yep. So the, the starring role was, uh, yes. was taken by uh, Blue Peter's Peter Duncan. Hey. Excellent. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Star of star of Flash Gordon. Yeah. Uh, star the Wiz. of... Uh, yes, star of running the London Marathon a lot. Yeah. And who, was he chief scout yes, for a he while? Was, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before Bear, Before Bear. Yeah. said, moved in and said, thanks, Pete, I'll take it from here. <laughs> right, so hang on. He Now, he doesn't strike me as the uh, person who would play Charlie Peace because he's, you know, he's quite a. Good looking. He hasn't got a rubbery face, basically, <laughs> has he? Is what I'm trying to say. Was Rowan Atkinson all in, also <laughs> unavailable? <laughs> unavailable. Uh, who else was in it? Uh, Norman Pace of Hale and. I mean, he Ooh. strikes me as the person who. He should have played the rub- Peace, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the rubbery, rubbery uh, appearance. But anyway. Maybe yeah, which one of them was, was PC Cock? I don't know. I actually don't know what the, what the lineup was, other than. Uh, well, what are the other? How about the ha- the the hangman? Um... John Ellis, played by Janet Ellis. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a bit. He's far too handsome, definitely for this. Technically, Charlie Peace looked like everyone, so he could look yeah. like Peter Duncan if he wanted. Yes, to. Yes, that is, that is true. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That's all for this time. If you want to know more about what we've discussed over the course of this episode, just Google it or something. You can see daily true crime updates on our Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. You can email us or you can support the show with a PayPal donation. And links to all of those are on our website at truecrimediary.co.uk. Don't forget to send us a review or post one in your podcast service if you can. And all five star reviews will get a shout out on a future episode. Join us next time when we'll be similarly discussing and digressing on another event in true crime history. Until then, my thanks to Jed and Rue. My name's Mark and we'll see you on the next date in our true crime diary.